We'll square it and see which candidate survives. It's the math guy, Steve. So, because we got the square root of 3x plus 4 equals x minus 2. So, to get rid of this radical, we would square both sides. So, squaring this left-hand side gives us just 3x plus 4. Squaring the right-hand side, that means I have to multiply it by itself. So, x minus 2 times itself. Okay, in other words, I have to FOIL this or multiply it out. So we get 3x plus 4 equals, this becomes x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now it's a quadratic, so we get 0 on one side, factor the other side, set each factor equal to 0. So subtracting 3x and subtracting 4, we get 0 equals, this becomes x squared minus 7x, okay? Uh, the 4s end up canceling. Factoring this right-hand side, we would say, well, they both have an x in common, so take out the x out of each. So we get x times x minus 7 equals 0. And I would say that each of these factors equal to 0. So x equals 0, that's one of my solutions, and x minus 7 equals 0, so x equals 7. So those would be my two solutions. However... We have to check it, right? Sometimes extraneous solutions can occur, and we have to plug it back into the original and see if we get a true statement. So if I plug in 0, we get the square root of 3 times 0 plus 4. Is that equal to 0 minus 2? Well, 3 times 0 is 0, and plus 4, we get 4. And the square root of 4, this is the principal square root, the positive square root of 4 is 2. Is that equal to 0 minus 2, which is negative 2? This is not true, meaning 0 is not a solution to this equation. We would say it's extraneous. So if I plug in 7, we get the square root of 3 times 7 plus 4. We say, is that equal to 7 minus 2? Is this true? Well, 3 times 7 is 21, plus 4 is 25. This is the principal square root of 25, which is 5. Is that equal to 7 minus 2, which is 5? This is true. This checks out, meaning 7 is the solution to this equation. Always remember, math is everywhere. You can find problems like this in the book.